I'm Ranisha Bing, founder of HerAgenda.com. I'm here today with the Senior Vice President of Marketing for Barclays Center and the Brooklyn Nets, Elisa Padilla, for our Peek Inside Her Agenda series. What would you say is the best part of your job? The best part of my job is that every single day is different. There's not a day that is replicated. So that's the most exciting part of my job. But what does that look like when you go into your office? What's first on your agenda? Okay. So first on my agenda is I'm usually in the office. Um, I'm usually in the office about 6.30 in the morning. Um, and it starts off with, okay, what are the priorities for the day? So whether it's reviewing ticket sales reports, that's usually the first thing that I do is print out um, the ticket sales report for the team and also on the arena side to look how we're doing with sales. Mm -hmm. And then really identifying it on the team side, it's like, okay, if I see that there's a couple games that are light, working with the team and saying, okay, how are we going to strategize to really push and highlight this certain game to drive ticket sales? And then on the arena side, it's really looking to see, okay, if we have the, the events that we own and that we promote, saying, okay, what are we going to do to, again, push the details? Every single day is different, um, and there's some days where, you know, my inbox is filled with emails and I'm trying, I'm on the move and I'm trying to respond to email in between meetings. When you were a little girl, did you imagine that you would be doing what you're doing today? No, absolutely not. No? Nope. What was no. your dream when you were a little girl? Um, you know what? It's it's really I I don't even remember like you know ever remember saying you know I want to do this when I grow up or I want to do this when I grow up. I so I fell in love with the sport of basketball because my older brother played high school basketball um, and his games were family outings. So you know I'd be on the bench with my other siblings cheering him on. Um, and then when I went um, to college, um, we were required to do an internship. And I originally thought that I wanted to do television. I wanted to do television production. And I was fascinated with TV and you know programming. And I did an internship at a cable network. And I quickly learned, I'm like, okay, I don't like this. But I sat next to the sales and marketing people. And I was like, well, I'm more interested in what those people are doing. And that's when I discovered sports marketing. And rewinding to when you were at at and you were, you know, had this great situation, this great setup. How did you still manage to keep your ears and eyes open to what's happening in sports and get that call for the opportunity here? I well, um, I definitely read all the trade publications, so I kind of, I wanted to keep my pulse on what was happening in sports. Um, but believe it or not, I the call that I got from the recruiter was someone who I had met like six years prior, um, and I had kept in touch with her. You know, just every holiday I would send her um, a holiday card, and I really, I wasn't looking for a job when I got the call. But right? it was like, meant to be, it seemed. Yeah. Because I, now we're here, and we're yeah. doing this interview at the Barclays Center with the backdrop, and yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. You're, you were also behind the Hello Brooklyn campaign, yes. which I loved. What was the approach with that? How did that come together? So um, when I started with the Nets, um, we were we were about a year and a half out from moving to Brooklyn, um, and I was thinking about the brand and what moving to Brooklyn was going to mean for the team. Um, and we had research that showed that Brooklyn Nets were very very hungry to have their own, you know, to have a team to call their own. Um, and you know, internally with the team, we were, we talked about what was our approach going to be, right? We didn't want to be like the big bad guys coming in, and you know, with everything, with how long it took to build the arena, we really just wanted to come in and um, and really be part of the fabric of Brooklyn. And um, when we started thinking about the brand voice, you know, as we were talking, we were like, we want to have the voice from within the borough. We don't want to speak to the borough because we thought that was really, really important. And someone sent me a YouTube link um, for, um, and the song was Hello Brooklyn by Jay-Z. <laughs> um, and he wanted me to look at the graphics in the video. Um, and the graphics were great. And I thought, I was like, wow, I was like, Hello Brooklyn. I was like, this is pretty cool. Like, wow. So I literally wrote Hello Brooklyn on a post-it and put it on um, a Kleenex box by my computer and I looked at it every single day. 
And every single day I looked at it and I thought, well, you know what, there's, like, I like the simplicity of it, you know, I like how it's so humble. You say hello to everyone that you meet. What did Jay-Z think of it? Um, so I don't know firsthand what Jay-Z th um, thought of it, but I do, I did hear that he was very pleased with the way that, that we launched the brand. Mm -hmm. And after looking at that post-it for months, and then when you finally saw maybe the big poster or the big billboard that had Hello Brooklyn, how did that feel? It w again, just to, it was just like dreams do come true. You know what I mean? Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't while, you know, people want to say, you know, you say you were the author. At the end of the day, it was a team effort because I, I wouldn't be where I am without my team. And you've accomplished a lot with your team, of course, but you mentioned, you know, moments where you felt like you weren't going to quite get it. When you came in for the interview, you didn't think you were going to get it. So how do you overcome those moments of doubt and anxiety to still accomplish what you need to do? I, I keep myself in check, you know, I feel that every single day is an opportunity to earn my chair. I don't take my chair for granted. And every day, I know that I have to be on my A game. So sometimes it's a little overwhelming, but at the end of the day, when I feel overwhelmed, I take a step back and I'm like, okay, what are the priorities, right? What needs to get done? What do I need to accomplish? At the end of the day, like, I don't want people, I want people to like me for me, not for my, what my title is. And what's next on your agenda? What's going to be your next goal? Um, my next goal is to continue to do what I'm doing, but taking it to the next level. Like I really, really, when I think about Barclay Center, I want to put this place on the map. My goal for Barclay Center is to make it a global destination where people are coming to New York and they make a list that says Empire State Building, you know, Statue of Liberty, that Barclay Center is on that list. Mm -hmm. um, and on the team side is really to really get people and develop that that brand affinity to really um, make people and Brooklyn Knights die hard in that <laughs> It was an honor to be able to speak with you and thank you for sitting down with us and sharing all of your advice and your stories of how you got to where you are today. Thank you. Thank you.